Hi, this is Quantum Strategy, and I'm David Roach, and I'm here just to give you what I reckon is now going to be the micro podcast on macro on a Monday, all the M's in a row. Uh, several things we need to bear in mind when it comes to markets. First of all, in the United States, looking at the polls, they have started to move uh, a little decisively in the direction of a Harris win. Uh, the national polls show that her lead has increased from 2 to 3% in the last seven days. If you look at the swing states, which are probably the deciders of who becomes president, then uh, she now controls approximately, uh, she now controls five, or is predicted to win five, and Trump two, with uh, her gaining one swing state during the week. And that would give her, if it turned out to be reality, 86 presidential votes from those states and Trump 27. That is starting to be uh, a factor to be, to be put or considered in your investment decisions. Let's move on to the Middle East. Uh, Israel will extend the war into uh, Lebanon in order to push the remnants of Hezbollah back 30 kilometers from its borders. The purpose is to allow it to return its displaced citizens to their homes. Iran will not retaliate. And the reasons Iran will not retaliate are multifold, but let's list just these ones. First of all, Iran fears that uh, the superb Israeli intelligence that uh, penetrated Hezbollah might also be applicable to its power structure and that if it did retaliate, Israel would do it damage, which would be almost unimaginable. The second reason is because uh, Iran's defense strategy was to surround itself with um, proxies, and those proxies have now been decimated, and Israel has demonstrated that it can attack uh, on multi-fronts at the same time, so that Iran no now no longer has a credible defense policy. And as Iran itself is on the last stretch to becoming a fully nuclear weaponized state, they don't want to upset the apple cart at the moment when that might all be destroyed. And Israel would only look for an excuse. They probably would like very much that Iran would attack them so that they could do such damage to Iran without the Americans being able to say they were doing bad things. But that's not going to happen. What that actually means is that you won't get a spillover international, into international energy prices. And that is reinforced as a conclusion by the fact that the Saudis are lowering their target price per barrel of oil from 100 to about $80. Okay, now let's move on to other things in Japan. Nishiba's uh, uh, as prime minister, he's called an election in October that he's going to win that election. And the main result, I think, is a shift in, a profound shift in the thinking of Japan on uh, defense. And I think we're going to see Ishiba moving towards creating alliances with Korea, even possibly with Taiwan, so that uh, uh, Japan actually fully participates in containing China. In the long run, I think that's good for the world, but in the short run, it's going to increase tension in the area as it denotes uh, it denotes a much higher level of military confrontation in the region. Now, finally, uh, well, not semi-finally, I want to come to Ukraine. Ukraine, Zelensky's visit to the United States was a bit of a PR disaster. The plan uh, for the peace plan did not really gain any traction. Uh, it is quite likely that uh, there is a plan B for peace, which is that Ukraine would accept a ceasefire if they were offered a membership of, the, of NATO uh, immediately or on a very short time period basis. Uh, we don't know that is happening. We don't know uh, what the situation is as regards permitting Ukraine to strike deep into Russian territory, which is what is needed in order to win the war. Uh, but there are certainly, there are certainly a lot of um, uh, kind of chairs moving on the deck uh, as regards the war in Ukraine and Russia and the United States. So uh, I think one should be ready for all sorts of shocks and moves in that area. 
And finally, in China, as you know, the big bazooka has been trotted out and gone boom, boom, boom. We're waiting for some of the fiscal bazooka to come. But that is not a turning point for China because this sort of macro top-down led um, uh, measures are not what is needed. What is needed is uh, actually confidence at the consumer level. And as households no longer really uh, believe in in the directions they're getting uh, to go out and spend and be happy of it afterwards, and the government is not going to happen. But there is one thing we do need to remember in China. There are uh, There is the question that Xi decided to focus on the economy, hence the big bazookas, hence the people at the top of the power structure in China are aware that things are really not good at the economic level and they need to do something about it, which was not evident in the fragmented response we've seen to date. What this is not telling us is that uh, Xi has been in Xi, has in some way been overridden by the party and is losing power. It is much more likely that this is uh, Xi doing one of his famous zigzag decisions, 180 degree turns, like he did at the end of COVID, where all controls were eliminated in a, in a day. Uh, that is the way his mind works. But it does not tell us there is some form of collegiate uh, uh, governance of China. It is still uh, uh, a power structure which is entirely controlled by uh, President Xi. That's it for this week's, uh, oh, shall we call it, the uh, Monday Macro Micro Podcast or some convoluted name like that. But in any case, it's a short message for investors uh, to consider on Monday morning as, as regards what has happened in geopolitics of relevance to the markets over the weekend. Thanks so much for participating.